all you rad movie lovers out there. What's up, hey, It's your old pal Rick. Oh, yeah. And Rick. And hey. Rick. Hi. And Rick and Rick. How, How you doing? Man. And we want to welcome you back one more time to the fantastic show called... Red Movie Rama! And do we have a hot one for you this time? Because we're going back to 1976. And we're going to cover the H.G. Wells Food of the Gods. Well, that was not very impressive. Uh, question for you, Skippy. This H.G. Uh, Wells guy. Isn't that that fat director that everybody thinks is hot snot? Uh, no, actually, that is Orson Welles. You've, you've got your whales mixed up. Well, the the only whale we've had around here is a killer whale that's been killing a bunch of people. So what do I know? Yeah, man, when that whale bit that woman's leg off, that was hot. Sir, you really, really need to go to the doctor. Hey, you know what? Don't even mind him. Because we need to get on with the show. So, this is H.G. Wells. This guy wrote all kinds of sci-fi stories that have been made into several movies and TV specials. And this one I'm particularly fond of. Well, hooray, everybody. Rick is fond of a movie. Give him a cookie. Hey, you ain't got to be so mean about it. Well, I- excuse me, because you've just made me sit here and watch all these movies that are terrible. And uh, you you expect me to just... You know, yay, that's that's good. Uh, I don't think for one minute you're hating these movies. Well, well, all I know is I wouldn't show any of these to mom. Well, I don't really consider that a bad thing. So let's get on with it. Take it away, Rick. Food of the Gods. Known in France as Le Food of the Gods. Is a 1976 adventure horror sci-fi flick. A group of friends travel to a remote Canadian island to hunt, only to be attacked by giant killer animals which have populated the island. Directed by Burt Gordon. You need a large animal in your film? This is your man. Starring Morjo Frickin' Gortner as Morgan, professional football player and chicken killer. And you know what? No one else in this movie really matters because you've got more Joe frickin' Gortner in this movie. Oh, and some giant rat heads built by Rick Baker. Back to you, Rick. Well, you know, when we were first talking about this, and I thought, yeah, maybe this would be something I want to watch. And guess what? No, I, I don't. Oh, come on, man. This is a good one. Let's go. So, uh, when we start off with this movie, we're following Morgan. Like we said earlier, was a pro football player. And, uh, you know, he's needing some time to relax. And uh, he decides to go to an island and uh, just kind of take it easy for a bit. Well, you know what? That's that's a good thing because people need to take a break when they work hard. Yeah, they do. And then one day while uh, he's out hunting on horseback and his, uh, one of his friends rides off to chase some game and his horse gets spooked and it throws the guy off the horse. Oh, wow. I mean, did, what, did the horse, like, raise? up and like react like slinging him around maybe like hit him on a tree or something yeah man hit his head knock his brains out hey sir sir we are serving number nine and you're number like 22 so just put a sock in it would you uh anyways the 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 horse sling him off Uh, no not really the guy just kind of falls off the side of the horse while the horse is just kind of standing still jeesh well, so much for the excitement then. Uh, so, well, what what scared this horse then? I bet it was a giant octopus, cause I heard the horses don't like octopuses. Sheesh! I hate to tell you this, Randy, but you couldn't hear Nell Carter falling down a flight of stairs, Randy. All right, calm down, fellas. Uh, what he sees and what scares the horse is, uh, you see a big swarm of giant wasp up in the air. Well, wow! Now that's that's interesting. So, great big wasp. How big are they? Mm. No bigger than a squirrel. <laughs> well, it is a trick question with a trick answer because in the sky they look like they're about the size of a football, but the guy is swatting at them back and forth like they're little because you don't see them when he's swatting. But then we say great big one on his back. Okay, so are these like CGI bugs or something like that? Uh, no, actually this is 1976, so they're like superimposed when they're in the sky, which... Kind of looks like they just blew him up. But anyways, uh, but then the, the one that's on his back is just a big rubber bug. It doesn't even do anything. They have to shake around to give it some motion. Yeah, and the excitement level is through the roof. Yeah, well, anyways, Morgan leaves his 
dead friend that's been stung to death with uh, his buddy Brian, another guy that's there on the trip, and uh, he goes to get help. And he finds this log cabin, but uh, he can't get anybody to come to the door. And he hears a noise outside in the shed, and he goes out there and opens up the door, and he gets attacked by a giant rooster. Oh, well, now, now, that can be frightening, so the excitement level just jump back up there. Uh, how 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 tall is this rooster? Is he like two, three foot tall? <laughs> no, man, this thing's like six foot tall at the least. Oh, that would make for a big pecker, boy. Hey, hey. Hey, we don't have that on this show. Where, where's your manners? I don't think that's what he was talking about. I think he was talking the, about the rooster's beaks. Well, I I know better. And, sir, get your mind out of the gutter. And, Studley, let's get back to the cockfighting. Yeah, man, because that's hot. Yep. I'm surrounded by idiots. Anyways, Morgan makes it out okay because he finds a pitchfork. Oh, no. And he stabs the rooster with it multiple times and oh, kills no. it. And then the camera pulls back, and you can see there's like three or four more super large chickens in there. So Morgan makes a dash for the door to get out, and he locks the door back behind him. Oh, that's terrible. Why Why would you kill these chickens? What did this rooster ever do to him? Hey, you know, I think I know the backstory to this. Those large chickens are for Bojangles. They're known for their large chicken breasts. Yeah, I don't think they're that big. Well, I definitely know there's a song about it. His afro's high and it's full of sweat. One of his friends just got stung to death. Stuck out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. He's lost, boy. He found a farm on a piece of land. Maybe a phone or can lend a hand. The chickens squeal to me from somewhere. I think they're in that barn, boy. More. Joe just pitchforked the rooster. Yeah, boy. Yeah, he did. Get the giant rooster. Any boys? Oh, yeah. You know, Mojo ain't gonna die, boy. I think that's a wrap. Let's go get some lunch. <laughs> so, uh, are you are you happy? Are you happy with yourself, there, Randy? Look at this over here: chickens in a parade, marching up and down, wearing their boots. Get real. Yeah. Anyways, Morgan goes back to the house and sees an old lady standing in the window. And he starts yelling at her about the large chickens. And then she meets him at the front door with a shotgun. Holy jeez, this lady means business. Yes, yeah, she does. But Morgan just asked to use the phone. and But she doesn't have one. But then the lady says, uh, won't you come in the house and look at something? And uh, they go and look where some rats have chewed into the house to get some of the feed. And this lady's got a container on the table that's full of this goop. Oh, goop? What goop? What kind of goop? Oh, it kind of looks like plaster of Paris. He's, he's kind of right. That's kind of what it looks like. But the, the lady says that uh, it came from the Lord, and they mix it with a bunch of the chicken feed, and that's the reason the chickens got big. And she's afraid the rats have been getting in there, and it's going to make them big as well. All right. Well, it looks like this movie's already run right into a ditch. Who in their right mind would feed animals this stuff? I mean, it's that's going to make them bigger than people, huh? Who? Well, I guess you could say it's kind of an experiment, but uh, this lady's husband is out making a big corporation deal to sell this stuff to increase the size of, you know, cattle, chicken. See, I told you, it's Bojangles. It's Bojangles. Put a lid on it, doofus. Yep. So, at this point, Morgan goes back, and him and his buddy pick up the guy that was stung to death and put him in a jeep, and they drive him to the closest town so they can figure out what happened to him. What happened to him? What happened to him? I mean, look at the guy. He looks like a bloody burrito. What happened to him? Yeah, but the point is, is while they're away, we cut back to the cabin, 
and the lady that's there is going to fix herself some lunch, and she puts her hand down on one of the counters, and like this big, giant caterpillar-looking thing just starts chewing her hand off. What? What? Cat- caterpillar chewing her hand off? Yeah, man, maybe get on her head and start chewing on her brain. Holy jeez, this is disgusting. Well, just hold on to your hat, Fred, because the next scene, we've got the husband trying to make his way back home, and it's a stormy night, and his car breaks down in the middle of the woods, and then he gets attacked by a whole bunch of huge rats, and they tearing into pieces. Boy, this movie got real dark really fast. Yeah, we got a lot to cover here. It's really picking up the pace. So at this point, Morgan finds out from the doctor they said that uh, his buddy had been stung like by 250 wasps or something like that, but Morgan knows better. So he gets the idea to go back to the island and talk to the crazy lady that was feeding the animals so they can stop all this before it gets worse. Oh, well, maybe he can go back and just stab her with a pitchfork or something. Animal killer. As well. You're starting to show your angry side. But next we got a, a businessman and his associate driving out to the cabin to uh, meet the husband. Oh, well, of course. Why? Well, if you remember, I said earlier, the farmer went to make a deal with a, a big business deal, right? So that's these people coming back, but they beat the husband back. And now his wife is really concerned that something happened to him. And they look at the barn, and the barn's been all busted up, and the rats had busted into the, the barn and killed all the chickens. Holy moly, this this movie's got more violence in it than a Rambo movie. Yeah, and, and the businessman is out there because he wants to see this goo for himself, so uh, the lady's going to show him where it comes from. Oh boy, this is not good at all. At all. Oh. Yep, so we kind of get a little repeat. I mean, we see where the stuff is bubbling up out of the ground and where they found it, but, you know, how they were feeding it to the chickens, and it made the chickens grow, and now the big chickens started eating the other chickens that didn't oh, grow. Ho, 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 ho. Did, did you just say chickens were eating the other chickens? Yes, yeah, some of the chickens grew really big, and the other ones did not, and the big ones started eating the small chickens. Well, now, isn't that great? Not only are they huge, but they're also cannibals. We should have just named this chicken cannibal apocalypse. You know, that's that's a great name. I think I've got a movie that kind of goes along with that, but we'll cover that later on. But right now, the lady's showing them where the, the Hellman's mayonnaise is coming up out of the side of a rock, and uh, they get scared away by some more giant wasps. Good grief. Yeah, and, and so they all get up and they run back into the cabin, and then we cut to Morgan and his buddy Brian driving back into the area in the Jeep, and they found a couple whose Winnebago's broken down, and uh, they talk about seeing giant rats the night before, and it caused them to have a wreck. Uh, you know what, Skippy? Now that I think about it, with, with a movie named like this, and it's from the 70s, uh, it was either gonna be about sex or giant rats. Yeah, sexy giant rats, that's hot! Y- yeah, you know what, you're getting pretty good at this. But uh, Morgan tells the couple, because he noticed that the lady that's in the way in Winnebago is pregnant, they should probably jump in the Jeep with them and go to the next town. But they refuse. They decide to stay there inside the Winnebago. Well, now, the, they may be the smartest people in this movie so far. M- maybe so, because I'll tell you, who's not smart, and that's the business guy who decided to step outside the house and go fight a bunch of wasps with a shovel. What? I mean, yeah, why would you... If you're inside and they're outside, why would you run out? I mean, who does this kind of stupid stuff? Yeah, really. But while he's out there, luckily Morgan and his buddy show up at the same time. He's out there swinging a shovel, and they pull out their shotguns and start blasting the wasps till they're all gone. Well, they should have let that sleaze ball die. You know what? You're kind of right, because as soon as the wasp leave, the business guy's concerned that Morgan and his buddy are there to cut in on his action. So even though he's seen this stuff and what it does to the wasps, he still wants to try to profit off of it. Yep. Great A sleaze ball. Yeah, but it looks like the assistant uh, for that sleaze ball, whose name is Lorna, thinks Morgan is hot. So she starts trying to, you know, get close to him. Holy jeesh. Is that all these people think about? I mean, you got giant rats, giant roosters, giant caterpillars, giant wasps, and they're talking about fornicating? Yeah, man, out there in the woods, that's hot! Uh, Just relax, there's not going to be any crazy sex scenes in his movies. But anyways, Morgan and Brian decide to go and try to find the nest, and when they do find it, it's as big as Mount Everest. And they fill the nest full of rags and sawdust and gasoline. They torch it, and it blows up, and it's like a 3.7 on the Richter scale. Wow, good thinking on their end. I mean, who would have known that sawdust would explode like that? Um, this Morgan's like a jack-of-all-trades yep, here. Yep, that's exactly why they picked more Joe to play this role. But then out of nowhere comes the, the old lady at the cabin, and she runs out to where they're burning the nest. Oh, hold on, hold on, Skippy, because uh, how did she find them so easily? I mean, it seemed like... Like, 
it took a long time for them to get there, and then she just pops up. Yeah, I don't really know. Maybe she heard the explosion, runs towards it. But anyway, she comes to tell Morgan that Lorna has uh, been taken away by the rats, and it looks like she just fell into a big rat hole. Ew. There's nothing I hate more than a big rat hole. Uh, did she make it out okay? Well, Morgan decides he's going to try to go down there and get her out, but uh, that doesn't work very well. Then he gets stuck down there as well. This is sounding dangerous. Yeah, and, and Brian, which is Morgan's buddy, is wanting to go down and try to save him, and uh, he tries to get the business dude to go with him, and he's like, you're out of your mind. And while that's going on, the rats show up down in the rat hole, and Morgan's down there with a shotgun just blasting rats left and right. Wow, that's that's pretty intense uh, they they make it out okay yeah they make it out but it really doesn't make any sense because brian finds another opening for them to come out of which is only about i don't know 10 feet from, from where they fell through a while ago okay that doesn't really make any sense at all yeah if the openings were only about 10 feet away from each other that's a that's a very small space to kill about five giant rats and we cut back to the winnebago and the the husband hears something outside and he goes out to look and there's a giant rat on top of his Winnebago, and he calls the lady to come out there and take a look. Well, this guy's a moron. What who, What kind of guy would make her come out there? Wouldn't she just stay inside and be safe? Well, that would be logical as well, but uh, the more they stand there, we see more and more giant rats on top of the Winnebago. Or more regular size rats on a miniature Winnebago, however you want to look at it. Ah, oh, so I get it. I get it. So it's basically we got a, a regular size rats, but they're on a miniature Winnebago. Y yeah, that was kind of the technology of the time, unless you went with stop motion. Well, I, I bet that uh, looks kind of bad then. Well, it don't look that great. But uh, now this couple is on foot and they run all the way to the cabin. So now we've got all of our people together in one place. And meanwhile, business dude wants to load up his car and take off right now, running right through the rats and making it out of there. But Morgan takes his keys away from him, and uh, there's no way to uh, get out. He says it's just way too dangerous. Well, it sounds like Morgan's trying to use some common sense here. Well, good for you, sir. Good for you. So, uh, does he come up with a better plan then? No, not really. He just, uh, he jumps in his Jeep and goes back to look at the Winnebago and see that it's just covered up with rats. <laughs> well, hold on, Skippy. I'm a little confused because why would he drive to go see the rats at the Winnebago when he already knows that they're big and huge because he shot five of them in a space that's like ten feet wide? It's almost like he just throws caution to the wind. I mean, who does he think he is? Kevin Nez or something? Whoa, wait a minute. You know Kevin Nez? Well, yeah, Studley. Everyone does. Best podcaster ever. Well, he's nowhere near as cool as Kevin Nez, but I think it's just an excuse to show some more rat footage in this movie. And while that's happening, we go back and see Mr. Businessman. He's out there with a teacup, and he's scooping up the goop, putting it in containers, and is planning to put this in the back of his car and get out of there. So he says he can go back home and start wiping his butt with $100 bills, yo. What? That sounds a little random. Where did he come up with that crap? Oh, it's a statement that he makes about when he gets back. He's going to be so rich that he could use $100 bills as toilet paper. Oh, I I get it. Mr. 70's corporate businessman. I got it. You you got to hate him. One time I used a $100 bill to light a cigar off of Jane Seymour's rear end. Yeah, man, that's hot. It was fantastic. Wrote a song about it. Want to hear it? I, I prefer that we don't. Anyways, back to the movie. Morgan has an idea that uh, maybe these rats will drown if they uh, try to cross water. Now, now, another mistake here, Skippy, because I know for a fact that rats can swim. Yeah, but they probably didn't weigh 200 pounds at that point either, did they? Well, that's that's a good point. And in order to get the rats to go into the water, he decides to electrify the fences that go around the property that leads them right into the water. Well, so, uh, uh, another question here, Skippy. What does he use to electrify the fence then? Oh, he's got a gas-powered generator. Well, that sounds really smart and very, very convenient. Where did he get it from? Yeah, you know, we, we don't really know that. But what we do know is he was right that the rats can't swim. But when they were heading back to the barn, they found out that uh, the rats had pushed a couple of trees over and it crushed the generator that was powering the fences. Oh, well, 
I guess now you're saying not only are the rats huge and carnivorous, but now they're also, like, really smart? Well, that seems to be the direction we're going now with this story, but uh, Morgan and them stop to the, try to move the tree, and they get ambushed by some rats. And then you got Morgan on the ground punching some fake rat heads, and his buddy's getting eaten alive by some other big rat heads. Oh, my gosh. This this sounds too, too gory to be on a screen. Is Morgan going to make it out okay? Well, he... he he finally breaks loose and gets his rifle, and then he just starts blasting some more rats, but he's too late to save his buddy. So he just jumps in his Jeep and takes back off to the cabin. What? I mean, what? He's just going to leave his friend out there to be eaten alive? What kind of friend is that? Well, I, I don't think there was enough of him left to save. But when Morgan gets back, he sees that the business guy has loaded up the trunk of his car with as much of the goo as possible. And uh, Morgan gets mad and starts dumping it all out on the ground to get rid of it. Well, good for Morgan. Good for him. I bet that business guy sure was upset, though. Boy, he sure is, because uh, he doesn't even realize that the rats have followed Morgan back to the cabin. And uh, while he's down on the ground trying to pick up what goo that he can back up, he gets uh, eaten by the rats. Y you know, Mom said we're not supposed to cheer when somebody dies, but yay! Well, anyways, we like we couldn't see this coming, right? Right. Uh, but then we cut to a scene that looks a whole lot like uh, Night of the Living Dead, but with rats. And Morgan is blasting through uh, the windows, shooting at the rats. And then somehow one of the rats chews through one of the metal water pipes that's uh, taking water to the house, so it cuts off the water supply. Okay. Hold on, Skippy. Hold on. I was with you for a while on the ride. But now we're just getting stupid. I mean, how can a rat be smart enough to know that these pipes were the water supply going to the house? And two, how could a rat bite through a metal pipe even if it was as big as a horse, huh? Y yeah, we're getting some pretty outrageous things here for sure. But uh, at this point, though, we also found out that the, uh, the rats have a leader, and it's an albino rat. Well, of course it is, Skippy. How else are these dumb people watching this movie going to know who the leader is if he doesn't stand out? Uh, you know, you've got a pretty good point there. So uh, what does uh, Morgan have in mind here? He's usually pretty slick at times like this. Well, he realizes that he opens about five gun shells. There's enough gunpowder in those to make about 50 sticks of dynamite. Well, it sounds like Morgan's pretty terrible at math then. Well, you can see it for yourself. He opens about five shells and he's got a bucket that's almost full. And also at this time, he teaches Lorna how to shoot a shotgun. And in passing conversation, she says that uh, she wished that he would make love to her. Oh yeah, getting it on while killing some rats. That's hot, sir. Sir, that they're in a struggle here. This is not time for anything like that. Uh, so, uh, that sounds like a very random conversation to have at this time. Well, like we established earlier, it is the 70s, and that's pretty much what was on everybody's mind back then. But I'm surprised we didn't have a sex scene where they're out in a big hot tub full of the goo. Yeah, man, and that would be hot. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what to say about that. Uh, and also, we don't have time for that, so, uh, Morgan and Winnebago Man go out the front door with a couple of sticks of homemade dynamite and a rifle, blow up some rats, make it to the Jeep, and they take off. Well, well, hey, I mean, wait, wait a minute. Are they just going to leave everybody else there? Well, I think it was, uh, he was trying to distract the rest of the rats to follow him to get them away from the house, but it doesn't work so well. And uh, while he's gone, the, the rats are, like, chewing on the house and busting through, and one comes through the window in the kitchen, and it eats up the old lady that owns the farm. Holy jeez, this lady can't catch a break, can she? Yeah, but she doesn't go down without a fight. She grabs a meat cleaver and starts hacking on that rat's head while he's chewing her alive, and they just both die simultaneously. You know, it would have been a whole lot more effective if they would have died at the same time. That's what that means, you jackass. At this time, uh, Morgan and Winnebago Man are going to blow up the dam to release the water to drown all the rats. So they go there with a couple of homemade sticks of dynamite, stick them in the dam wall, and it blows up and some superimposed 70s water comes blasting out. Well, that seems pretty convenient that there's a dam on a small island to keep it from flooding. Yep, yeah, pretty convenient. Hey, talk about convenient. Back at the house, we're just down to Lorna and the pregnant lady. Whoa, whoa, whoa wait, wait. 
You didn't say anything about a pregnant lady. Yeah, because it really didn't matter at all to this point. But uh, the rats are eating through the house, and the woman's having the baby at the same time. And like 20 seconds later, she has the baby like uh, there's no problem at all. Wow. Jeez, I mean, childbirth must have been so much easier in the 70s. Maybe it was the drugs. Yeah, could it be. Anyways, Morgan and Winnebago Man make it back to the house. They're beating the water back there. And uh, they get to the house and make everybody get up on the roof because uh, the floodwaters are coming. Wow, get up on the roof. That's going to be a challenge because uh, that lady just had the, the baby 20 seconds ago. That's going to be a challenge. Well, no, not really. She scoots up there first thing. Wow, now that's a tough lady. Yes, yeah, she is. And anyways, the whole group finally gets up on the roof the house and the flood starts coming and it starts drowning all the rats uh but there's a couple of rats that get up on the roof of the house and morgan has to shoot them but it looks like everything's kind of calming down at that point Whoo! Well, that's a sigh of relief i mean good for them because i'm glad this movie's not going to have one of those like last minute jump scare shots well, actually we do get one the uh the big white rat Climbs up on top of the roof of the house, and Morgan goes to shoot it, but his gun is empty, so he ends up beating the rat in the head with his rifle till he kills it, and it falls off in the water. So, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's the end of the rats, then? It sure is, and then it fades into a shot where Morgan and Winnebago Man are piling up a bunch of rats uh, that look way smaller than the ones that were attacking people earlier. But anyways, uh, they set them on fire, and they're burning them all up. Well, I don't know about you, Skippy, but I don't know if I would have gone through the trouble for all that. I probably would have just left the island. Well, yeah, but these are 70s people, and they are always thinking ahead. Uh, probably thinking they didn't want anything to eat these rats because it might make them grow big, too. Ah, uh, that's that's good thinking. Uh, that way it keeps anything else from going wrong. Well, they tried because uh, for the ending of the movie, we get a mason jar that's floating down a stream, and it's got some of the goo in it, and it floats down to where a herd of cattle are drinking the water. So uh, how, how are we sure that this is the uh, the same stuff that's in the jar? Oh, because the uh, the movie makers decided to put a label on the jar that says F O T D. Really? I mean, really? We just spent an hour and a half talking about this stuff. We have to put a label on it so people at the end of the movie will know it's the same stuff. Yeah, you know, there's some dumb people out there. But anyways, we get to one of those 70 narratives of Morgan saying that uh, we think we stopped it and we hope it doesn't get to any other animals. Who knows how it will end up? And then we see the cows getting milked. And then the milk is used to make ice cream. And then we see some kids at a school eating the ice cream. And that's the end of the movie. Oh, man, that means them kids are going to turn into giant rats. Uh, nice try, Randy, but uh, I think you're missing the point here. Oh, I get it. It's that uh, fantastic 70s narrative of us destroying the planet. Kind of like the Indian that cries on the side of the road because of littering. Exactly. The 70s was full of this kind of stuff. Uh, okay, Studley, so let me ask you, why wasn't the 80s filled with this kind of stuff? Well, because we decided to have a different enemy besides ourselves. And we were all scared to death of nuclear fallout, which in most cases would have been instant. So nobody thought that there would be a future to protect. So we just partied. Well, that sounds like a fantastic time. Well, we can talk about that on a lot of other shows coming up, but uh, what did you think about this movie? Well, versus some of the other monstrosities you've made me watch, Studley, this one wasn't too bad. Well, I'm, I'm happy. I think maybe you're finally hitting your groove here. Uh, what about the rest of you? What would you guys think? That's bad, man. That's bad, man. Bad, man. Well, that's awesome. This is one of those movies that I was hooked on even before I even saw the movie. Just the poster art alone, I would just stare at it forever, just looking at it, just trying to figure out how is this going to happen in this movie, which it doesn't. But still, the artwork just kind of blew my mind as a kid. If you haven't seen this movie and it sounds like something you'd be interested in, take a chance on it. You've got nothing to lose. It's only an hour and a half, but uh, it's one of those I'm always going to enjoy. Folks, Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time, rock and rollers.